Welcome back to another edition of All or Not According to Jack with your host, Jack Toledano. As you can see, sitting behind me is Venerable City Field. So, yes, uh, I didn't do a uh, sports talk last week, but I figured uh, Sunday night, uh, September 29th, end of the baseball season, we think, is a good time for yet another episode. So, uh, and uh, last episode, I showed everybody this book. This was a... Um, this was a book that I got for Christmas uh, a few years back. Uh, nice, very nice book. Uh, talking about the year that uh, Mets, Yankees, Giants, and Jets shared Shea Stadium. So, uh, funny week. Uh, very interesting week for those four teams this weekend. So, uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about baseball first. So... In the regular season, the Mets and Yankees faced each other four times, and miraculously, the Mets won all four of those um, match, all four of those games. So, I mean, while it was nice, and we had some bragging rights for a little while, and some Mets fans really rubbed it into 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 the heads and the faces of the Yankees fans. You know what? I didn't take it that seriously. I knew we still had a lot of work to do. And bottom line, where we sit today, the Yankees are sitting with that number one seed. So congratulations to the New York Yankees. They they have the best spot in the playoffs. That means they get home field advantage in every series that they are in. So that means that if they have to face those hated cheating Astros, uh, or the Cleveland Guardians, whomever, they are going to get the home, that game seven at home at in the ALCS, if it comes to that. So my congratulations across the river to the New York Yankees. Uh, George was all worried, but I told him not to worry. They always seem to pull it out at the moment of truth, and they did. Meanwhile, my New York Mets, <laughs> they miraculously, here it is, the last game of the regular season, and they are still alive. They um, they actually got rained out. They and the Atlanta Braves last week got rained out two games because of Hurricane Helene, I guess it was called, that traveled up the uh, up that corridor in, into Atlanta and flooded things out. Uh, my son's co-workers mentioned about flooding in Buckhead in, in the Atlanta area. So all my best wishes to those people that are dealing with that. Uh, hope everything works out with your homes. Uh, meanwhile, Mets and Atlanta Braves, I'm just going to, while I talk to you, let's go to the standings. Both of them sit at 88 wins and 72 losses. Uh, I thought it was looking bad for the Mets. They usually choke come this time of the year, but they got a big win. To, finally, in six tries, they finally beat the Milwaukee Brewers today. Uh, not that it really mattered for the Brewers. They were playing for pride, I guess. But uh, Mets did shut them out today, 5 to nothing behind the Great pitching of David Peterson. Way to go, David. Uh, awesome job. One hitter through seven innings. Good job, man. So we still have something to hope for. So tomorrow, uh, and the season is not over yet for the Mets and the Braves. They have to play a doubleheader, a single admission doubleheader in Atlanta. Uh, if both teams, if they split the doubleheader, both teams are in. I am not sure of the seeding. Let's see if it says playoff bracket. Uh, still uncertain. The Mets travel back to Atlanta. If the twin, the Mets and Braves advance, uh, Arizona can only be the number six seed if it reaches the postseason. If the Braves win either game of the doubleheader, they would play a division series at San Diego. Uh, that meaning that the Mets would have to go back 
to um, Milwaukee. Yes, the Mets would have to go back to Milwaukee for another three-game series. If by some miracle the Mets sweep uh, the doubleheader, they instead go to San Diego. And actually, if they sweep, then it's Milwaukee that... Uh, oh, then it's the Arizona Diamondbacks that would go to Milwaukee. So that's... Uh, I would say that's uh, about a little bit of an outlandish uh, prediction, but could happen. Stranger things have happened. <sighs> I mean, my my buddy, the, the the one that I've been telling you about, who's who is under this delusion that thinks that uh, all sports are fixed. This is what he said after the uh, the the Mets lost uh, the one game. Oh, okay. So actually, let's let's re okay. We'll talk about football after. So this is what he said after the Mets lost that one game last Monday night in, in Atlanta. Your Braves can't. Your Mets can't beat the Braves. It's rigged. You're like a disease, is what I said. So maybe they forgot to get on a flight to Atlanta. As for me, you know what? The Mets, as the, when the season began, they lost five in a row. And through the middle of May, they were playing like crap. I had no expectations. So when they put the put the put uh, their foot to the gas pedal in the middle of June, they started playing better. By July, I started to have hope again. So, it, you know, if for no other reason, they gave us some hope this year. Uh, we weren't supposed to compete this soon. I also had no expectations, not knowing this manager, Carlos Mendoza, and the job he would do. But, hey, he got us 88 wins this year. It's better than I would have hoped for. So, you know what? Whatever they do now, I think is gravy. I would love to see them advance into the playoffs. I'd love to see them get to the ALDS. But, you know what? I'm not going to get too upset if it doesn't happen. There you have it. Uh, hopefully I have a happy recap for you tomorrow night, but we'll see. On to football. Let's let's switch gears to football. Or as the guy said in the movie, The Longest Road, football! <laughs> okay, so let's, let's rewind one week ago. So, uh, Three of us went upstate, Susan, Jason, and myself. And fortunately, the uh, the Giants were on the Albany feed, so I got to watch the game against uh, Giants against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Uh, the Giants, it started off very badly. They freaking fumbled the kickoff. Uh, Browns recovered. First play from scrimmage, threw a touchdown pass. They're up 7-0. Miraculously, the Giants came back, made it 21 to 7 at the half. Didn't do shit in the second half, but their defense was held them off, allowed them one touchdown with a two point conversion. Giants ended up winning 21 to 15. So there was a little hope. Brings us to Thursday night. The Giants actually won the, the clock battle with the Dallas Cowboys. They, I think they. Had the time of possession was actually 10 minutes more than the Cowboys. But uh, the Giants, in losing to the Commanders a few weeks ago, um, where the Commanders couldn't score a touchdown, instead kicked seven field goals, beat the Giants 21-18, to 18, where the Giants couldn't kick for shit because Graham Gano got hurt. And there was no backup plan. So, you know, shame on you, Brian Dable. You knew the guy had a sore hamstring and what you, you didn't bring another kicker in, uh, carry another kicker into the game. Stupid, stupid. There have been times in the past where teams have carried two kickers. One for kickoffs only, 
one for place kicking, extra points and field goals. I don't know. I, I just don't know, Dayball, if, if you're the man for the job, which brings us to Thursday night. You know, people want it. So the Giants lost to the Cowboys 20 to 15. It was the Giants this time who couldn't put the ball in the end zone. They scored five field goals with their backup kicker that he finally got it into that thick skull of his to, to bring another kicker. Of course, Gano's now officially injured. You know, everybody has an opinion. Everybody's an armchair quarterback. Oh, it was uh, Daniel Jones's fault because he can't th he can't throw a deep ball. It's Brian Dable's fault because Daniel Jones uh, only got sacked once in the game, and and it was his crappy play calling. You, you know what I think. Uh, and then and then and then there's this other guy, another genius, uh, Sunday afternoon uh, quarterback who uh, who decided to to tell it me and everybody else. Oh, we have great re receivers, extremely talented receivers, and he couldn't get the DJ couldn't get the ball to them. Well, if they're so great, why weren't they in the Pro Bowl last year? You, you tell me. Where was Wandale Robinson and uh, and Darius Slayton and, and Jalen Hyatt against uh, the Minnesota Vikings week one? The guys couldn't get open. Three excellent receivers. Where the fuck were they? That you lost, what was it, uh, 28 to, to 6 was that was the final? You know, granted, Wandale Robinson a little bit better, but he dropped a couple. Uh, I think Slayton had a drop. Uh, Jalen, no, not Jalen Hyatt. Um, Malik Neighbors had that drop again at the end of the game. So that's now two drops at the end of the game at crunch time that you dropped, which, you know what? Granted, I can forgive you, but you know what? The blame has to go all the way around. You all share equally with the blame. I mean, I wanted to blame their running game, but you know what? You can't really blame Singletary because if they're going to stack nine guys in the box, you have to be able to beat them with the pass, and you didn't get it done, Daniel Jones. You know, that's they don't call you Daniel Danny Dimes for, for nothing. 10-yard pass, 20-yard pass. You know what? You can't just dink it down the field. They're eventually going to stop you guys. You, you're going to have to be able to prove that you have deep threats. Uh, you can't blame Jalen Hyatt if you only put him in a few plays a game and, and you only throw it over the top deep. You know, the chances of catching those are, what, 5 10%? You know, for, for a really good quarterback, chances get better that it, that you're going to connect once in a while and giants of the past have connect. They, you know, uh, they've connected with, uh, Monty Toomer. Uh, who's the other guy? I can't think of his name. Uh, uh, shit. A few years later, uh, you know, scored a touchdown against the Atlanta Falcons in the playoffs. I, I can't think of his name. Uh, but in any event, you know, you can't leave it up to a last minute downfield throw. Uh, granted, a couple plays last year, they got a couple of deep balls to Darius Slayton. But you know what? Until you make those completions, they, they're going to keep stacking the box. They're going to keep doing that. Uh, somebody had a very good point where they said that Daniel Jones underthrew. Malik neighbors on that one play. I don't know if anybody was watching that one play where the guys, the cowboy defender got his, uh, his uh, ankles twisted. Malik neighbors was wide open, but what did you do? You underthrew me. I had to come back to the ball. So they were able to, they were able to shove him out of bounds. You hit him in stride. That's a touchdown. So yeah, you, you were not without, you were not blameless in this Daniel Jones. And you know, and, and then all this talk about Brian Dable to the press. Oh, he's impressed me. He's been great. 
Well, what the fuck you think he's going to say? The, the, the Giants management really fucked up. Paying him, what, $35, $40 million a year? He, he's no Eli Manning. He's no Phil Simms or no Jeff Hostetler. Uh, you know, he won you that one playoff game uh, two years ago against the Vikings. But you had, you had uh, Saquon Barkley at that time. You know what? This guy's not getting it done. And you know what? If Dable were to go out to the press and say, yeah, Daniel Jones is the problem, well, guess what? Giants management has complete egg on their face for the rest of the season. They got to toe the company line and say, yeah, this is our guy. Because of the fact that you're paying them $30, $30 million, at what point do you cut the cord with this guy? Because he, he's just not going to get it done. He's not good enough. You know, a couple times I, I like he, he you had a couple of play fakes where he ran the ball. But that last time, Cowboys didn't buy it. They stopped him for like a five, six yard loss. You know what? Uh, I, I don't. This team could be. Two and six, one and seven by midseason. That would that was a game you had to win in Washington. That's a team that you've owned for several years. Uh, that game against the Cowboys, that was a golden opportunity to win that game and break that streak, which, by the way, somebody wrote in uh, to my channel a few weeks ago suggesting that I do an episode of the Cowboys-Giants rivalry, and I think that is an excellent idea. And at some point, I will pursue it. You know what? Maybe I'll have it out there. And, and it looks like they're meeting for Thanksgiving on Turkey Day again. So maybe I'll have an episode ready to go right before Turkey Day. But uh, lots to talk about in that uh, Giants-Cowboys rivalry. But you guys clearly could have ended that 12-game losing streak Thursday night. And you didn't get it done. So you know what? Don't point fingers. Oh, it's the defense's fault. It's DJ. It's the receivers. It's the running game. It, it's it's Daniel. Jo it's uh, Brian Dable's fault. It's all your fault. Collectively, every single one of you needs to look in the mirror. That includes you, jo Joe uh, Shane and and John Mara for for giving Daniel Jones that that ridiculous contract that you can't get out of now. Maybe at the end of this year you can get out of it, but you basically fucked this team for a good two, three years. I, I don't get it. So that's why everybody's picking on Daniel Jones, and that's why he's the poster boy and the scapegoat for the losing of this team, where you should be three and one right now, whereas it's it's the commanders who are sitting at three and one and in first place miracle miracle of miracles they're actually a game ahead of both the eagles and the and the cowboys right now could you imagine oh, and then there's that other team uh, that inhabit the meadowlands uh, metlife stadium the jets could have been could have sat at 3 and 1 right now that was a game you needed to win today but you, you didn't get it done. Three field goals for the Jets. They lose 10 to 9 to the Denver Broncos, who apparently the Jets weren't really the only team who have overlooked the Broncos. Apparently also the Tampa Bay Bucks, who ran rough shot over the uh, Eagles today. Good for you, Bucks. <laughs> apparently they also overlooked the Bucks, the, the uh, Broncos. Uh, Broncos apparently have a good defense. Uh, didn't let the Jets get in the end zone. Uh, didn't uh, let Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers throw a touchdown pass. You know what? Plenty of blame to go around. Uh, the talk of the NFL right now is the Minnesota Vikings sitting at 4-0 with Sam Darnold as their quarterback. A guy that couldn't get it done with the Jets. Apparently, nobody can get it done with the Jets. 
it, it, it just proves you have a shit. You you've basically got to tear your franchise apart and rebuild. Uh, neither team is a good team. Jets or the Giants. I mean, you know, with the right coach, you can get it done. But neither neither team has the right coach. I mean, the right coach and the right quarterback can put you in a position to win so pull out some of those games that you weren't supposed to win. Uh, rewind back to 2007. The the Giants went into the playoffs at t- 10 and 6 was their final is what they finished in the regular season. You know what? I wasn't expecting them to yes, they got past the Tampa Bay Bucks in their building. That was a winnable game. I was not expecting them to get past yes, the Dallas Cowboys only time they ever faced the Dallas Cowboys in the postseason and what happened they our defense tightened up uh and Eli played an amazing freaking game uh Amani Toomer they uh who is the other guy uh not uh oh shit uh Plexico Burris they had him doubled so what did the Giants do they they went big to Armani Toomer a couple times and with his speed he broke a couple he broke a tackle early touchdown something that you should have fucking did Thursday this Thursday night you could have done that with Malik Navis and you didn't and and that touchdown set the tone for the whole game and with, with a coach like Coughlin who knows what the hell he's doing you know made made damn sure his guys were prepared what did they do? They upset the Cowboys, a, a major, major upset. So so then the next week they were in the frozen tundra in Green Bay. Um, you know what? I had more confidence. I thought there was a chance they could upset Green Bay. It just be for the mere fact that they got past the Cowboy team. And and I, I didn't think the 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 Packers were as strong as the Cowboys. Tough game, but the Giants pulled it out again to get to a Super Bowl. Then what happened? They faced an undefeated uh, uh, New England Patriots team who were 18 and 0. You know what? I said to myself, I didn't say that they were going to win, but I said if they kept it close, anything could happen at, at the end. What happened at the end? Fade past the Plexico Burris Giants. Giants defeat the New England Patriots. Patriots finish their season 18 and 1. So people don't panic about the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs that, that are 4 0. You know what? They are not invincible. They, I mean, I thought that the Chargers earlier today looked pretty good, but in the end, it was the uh, it was the Chiefs that prevailed, seventeen to ten. You know what? Because they have a franchise quarterback, they have a great coach. You know, with a great coach and a great quarterback, things can happen. The Jets and the Giants clearly do not have that. You know, the Jets think they have it with Aaron Rodgers. No, they don't. He, they, he proved it today. It is not going to happen. They're two and two when they should be three and one. Granted, they probably didn't, wouldn't have won that game in uh, San Francisco, but you know what? Could have made it closer. Who knows? What can I tell you? Two and two. One and three. Welcome to the NFL. By the way, uh, this is unless he comes back to me with with any more bullshit talk about uh, uh, about the game being fixed. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to really talk about it anymore. And you, you want to know something? If he was the only person who did that, that would be one thing. A uh, friend of mine through SOT uh, has his own channel, has his own. Uh, you know, he he passed a comment uh, after the uh, Eagles lost to the uh, Chiefs about, you know, a bunch of people passed a comment about how, oh, the game is rigged because 
the Chiefs beat the Eagles. No, it's not. The Eagles had their chances. I watched that freaking game, and I said as much. And and what happened? Somebody attacked me. Somebody questioned my pre my football credibility. Uh, you know, my good friend Pete Pardo has uh, r really good uh, cred when it comes to physical media and albums and bands and stuff like that. I feel like. I have that credibility when it comes to football. So don't try to tell me otherwise that that's freaking BS. Learn to, t you know, and that's, that's the last point that I want to make. Uh, these goddamn phones and, and social media, ever since social media happened, it, it, it just feels like people, now make excuses for, for when their team doesn't win. Uh, you know what? You can't do that. I'm not making excuses. I don't think that the game was fixed, uh, the, the Cowboys and the Giants. Uh, I mean, my friend George Lemay made a very poignant uh, thought the other day. Uh, and good for you. Good on you, George. Um Let's go back to his, what he said. Where is it? Oh, oh, okay. So, as a joke, Hurricane Hurricane Helene throws MLB playoff race into chaos. So I says, I suppose the fix was on was on here too. So, George posted. If the fix was on in baseball, they sure as shit wouldn't have set out to make a Texas versus Arizona World Series last year. That didn't draw flies. Good on you, George. So, of course, my genius friend has to talk about the Black Sox scandal, that which happened over a fucking hundred years ago. Why would you bring that up? Uh, oh, and let me guess, the Kansas City Chiefs are so great. They're that great that they keep winning and winning and winning the, like the Patriots. They were great, too. Well, they weren't so great. My Giants beat them at the moment of truth. Uh, a couple of years ago, the Chiefs did get beat by the uh, by the Cincinnati Bengals. So you can't say that. <laughs> you, you can't. You can't. I mean, granted, they, they might go 15 and 2, 14 and 3. George and I went through the Chiefs schedule and we think, they probably will win most games because, hello, they have a franchise quarterback. They have one of the best quarterbacks in football. They have a great coach who knows how to win, who knows how to pull out the tough games. You can't keep making excuses that, oh, oh, it's fixed because certain teams keep winning. I didn't hear any complaints about the referees uh, in tonight's game, whereas I could have complained about the referees in uh, – in the Giants Cowboys game the other night, they had a real bullshit call. Um, their tight end Daniel Bellinger throw. Uh, he's running upfield, and the guy's grabbing his fucking face mask, and they called it on Bellinger, fifteen yards. So, but but did I say that the game was fixed? No, the Giants had other opportunities. They held the ball ten minutes longer. And they couldn't put it in the end zone. So, no, the game is not fixed. Uh, like I said, this is the last time I want to discuss it. I hope I don't have to embarrass you further talking about it. Uh, you know what? The people that want to say that uh, the referees should start wearing red and white striped jerseys because they're helping the, the Chiefs, well, shame on you. Tell your team to draft better. Tell your team to get a better coach. You know what? Make you guys practice harder. Just like the Giants. You, you don't want to see me as their coach during prep week. I would have Daniel Jones throwing that goddamn ball down the field till his arm falls off until he starts hitting people the way he's supposed to. Otherwise, sit your ass on the bench. So tired of this. Yeah, and the last thing is I, I don't understand why these people, masochists I call them, keep spending money 
on these PSLs and, and these season tickets to go to the game only to, to, to boo, their, boo their team because you feel like they're not giving you your money's worth. Well, guess what? At least one friend of mine did, did sell his, his season tickets, did give up his PSLs because he and his son were unhappy with the fact that they were kneeling during the national anthem. You know what? I applaud you. If, he, if enough is enough, then walk away. That's what I would tell this friend. If you, if you think football is so fixed, just walk away. I was this close to walking away from the Mets this year. And I did for a couple of weeks. And then guess what? Francisco Lindor figured out how to hit again. Uh, Carlos Mendoza did something genius. He put him at the top of the order and, and his bat caught on fire. His glove was always on fire. And then people behind him started hitting. Uh, he made the decision to, to send that uh, Brett Beatty down to the minors and keep uh, Mark Vientos at third base. Genius decision. Genius decision. Guy hit you 24 home runs, some in the clutch, uh, good hitter. Uh, Jose Iglesias, another good hitter. Uh, you stuck with Francisco Alvarez. He's shown flashes of brilliance. I think when he's healthy next year, he's only going to get better. Uh, I got to tell you, I am feeling pretty good about these guys for next year. So please keep it up. This is Jack Taldano. Speaking for all and on, according to Jack, uh, if you like what I do, please subscribe. Uh, please tell your friends about me. Uh, upcoming, I am going to talk about the new Chicago live album that just got released. So stay tuned for that. Talk soon. Bye.